today we got another video for you. These are not all my cars. This car here belongs to my old boss that I used to work for. He has a problem with his engine and it's a, a timing chain so I need to fix that for him. He just dropped this off just so that I could have a look at it and do some repairs. So we're gonna move this out of the way and get that out the door so then we can do a couple things with my cars. This 2001 over here is done. This 2005 right here, I've decided that I'm gonna use this only as a parts car because the thing is just way too rusty. Initially I was gonna build this thing and do some repairs and swap it some parts on it and get it running and make it nice and all that but it's just too much. It's too rusty. It's too much work to deal with. Not really interested in doing that so what I decided instead is that I'm gonna build this car. So this is a 2002 BMW E4 it's a 325i. I'm gonna build this one. I'm gonna boost this car. I'm gonna turbocharge it. I'm gonna make it nice and I'm gonna swap out some parts from this car onto this car because this car originally was sold to me as a parts car. There's a few things that are missing on this vehicle such as the headlights. We have a radiator fan that's missing. There's some tail lights, some interior trim pieces, stuff like that. So we're gonna transfer some stuff from this car over to this one. But this car currently is not running. I had to harvest a bunch of parts from it to get that to 2001 running. This car doesn't have fuel injectors, doesn't have coils, doesn't have any of that stuff. So we're gonna get this car running today. Then we're gonna be able to at least move it around and see if we can't get some pieces swapped over from this car onto this one. So I just got those things shoved around here. Got the one SUV on the street. This car here is open. That car there is moved around. This car hasn't moved here. I have a bag full of injectors and coil packs. Those are all gonna go back on here. Also, we got some spark plugs there. I'm pretty sure sparks are good on this here but we'll see anyhow yesterday it rained so I was over here and I actually blew out those spark plug holes there with some air it was all filled up with some water there so hopefully it didn't do any damage also yesterday I took out the ECU from this car and from that car because the all-wheel drive on these E46s so every single XI car is a MS 43 DME so I traded both of my DMEs for this one here so this is an EWS deleted B25 MS43. I decided I was going to do it this way because I don't know what interior pieces need to go back or if any security features were taken out from this thing because I know that the cluster has a security feature on it. But regardless, even if it didn't, eventually I'm going to boost this thing. So I need an EWS deleted ECU anyways. So that's going to be slapped in there today too. That's going to make this car run because if I didn't have that, this car is not going to start. So this is another thing that I found in my mom's basement here. This is an electronic fan for an E46. This is one of these things that I thought I'd probably never need. I might clean up that electrical connection a little bit. That's something that I need for this to get this going and so it doesn't overheat. That's why it's always good to keep some extra parts around. So first things first, I'm gonna stick these coil packs back in here. Then I'm gonna bolt them all down. So that's all those coil packs back in and bolted down and the connectors in them. There is that blue fuel line right back in there. That needs to go back into the fuel rail once we put that rail back on. The rail itself has the fuel injectors with the little o-rings on it and then they go into the electrical connectors so we're gonna do all that right now as well and hook up that fuel line and get that done these are these OEM fuel injectors I think that they're like 200 cc or something like that no nothing crazy once we get this thing turbocharged we'll switch out these injectors with the Chevy injectors that we're used to using from my tuner and then once he gets us some of those then we can put those in and those are about 800 cc's that we'll be dealing with yeah so we're just gonna pop this in right now now this has to be connected to that fuel line. All right, there we go, that's in. That was a little bit tough, but we got it in. Just gonna spray these down here with a little bit of lubricant just to make sure that that's going in the hole okay there. So now that those are in there, what we can do is we can put this electrical connector in here for the fuel injectors. All right, so legit, I know I just did all that extra there, but I decided just now because I'm looking in here on the air intake boot and you can see all those cracks in there. I just don't want to risk having a bunch of vacuum leaks and stuff like once I do all this. I mean, I'm going to boost test this thing anyways and, and see if there is vacuum leaks. So I decided right now I'm actually going to take those fuel injectors back off. I'm going to take that intake manifold off and I'm gonna do a CCV delete right now. So I guess those who are interested in doing a CCV delete, this is your video. Wasn't gonna do it this way, but it looks like that's how it's gonna be. So so here we go, CCV delete. So I didn't wanna bore you with taking those bolts out again. I just popped these out, which is good actually because I realized that these fuel injectors were not sitting into the O-rings. They were just sitting right on top and that's not good. They need to be pressed right down. I would've had to take that off anyways. Take this fuel line off back here. This is a good thing that we 
didn't have fuel running through this just yet. I'm gonna start by taking off all of these intake manifold bolts. They're all 11 mil. I just got all those bolts off of that intake manifold. Now underneath here, there's your engine harness right there. I'm gonna pop that bolt off. There's a couple other things that have to come off of here. Once we dig in here a little bit, once we get that engine harness off of there, there's another bolt on the bottom side, a 16 mil that holds the bottom of the intake manifold on. The engine harness box there has one bolt there, and then it has another one on the back side. I think there's only two on this thing. There might be three, but I'm gonna pop those off. I just popped this mass airflow sensor off, set this guy aside. This on this DISA valve needs to come off as well sensor needs to go there's one more bolt right under the air intake boot they're all 10 mils by the way I wish I had a better angle of this but inside here this fuel pressure regulator this goes on to the mount that has the brake booster on it and it's just attached to a little clip and you just pop it off for what it's worth this brake booster can actually just come right out now I'm just gonna take this DISA valve off here this is a t30 there's two bolts on this thing so I got those bolts off here I'm gonna pry that open a little bit here Looks like that was some gasket maker that was put on that. That is not OEM. So that will have to seal up again before we put this back on. But I think I might actually have an O-ring for that sitting around somewhere. Now I gotta get this intake boot off here. This was the most concerning piece out of all of them. This is a quarter inch here. Cause that will swap with one that's in the shed because I know for sure I have one that's in better condition than this one. This guy was actually pretty stuck on there, which is good, but not for what I need right now. So that's off. We gotta get that hose clamp on the back there and take that whole thing off. There we go, that's off. So this guy is junk, so I'm gonna use one that I know is good. So you can see here, like these stretch marks here, it's all cracking. So now this guy to the throttle body, that sensor needs to come off as well. So that needs to come off. There's a bolt right underneath of the intake manifold that is a bracket bolt that holds the intake manifold on, but I'm gonna have to take off this throttle body, which is four 10 mil bolts. So there's four bolts from the throttle body. There's one sensor underneath it as well for an idle sensor. Take that sensor off, and then we have our throttle body. That throttle body can come out. And so right there, that's what I was talking about. That 16 mil bolt right there, that's your bracket bolt for your intake manifold. I mean, you could have done that to get that off without the throttle body off, but it's kind of a squeeze to get in there and it's not even worth it. Anyways, I'm gonna take that off and then we're gonna pop this whole manifold off. That has to come off. This alternator wire here needs to come off. This is a 19 mil. And now that that bolts out, this whole thing can come free. So we're gonna get a good look about what's going on down here. That hose that was stuck in there that I just got off there, that's to the bottom of the intake manifold right there. That's the same one that we replaced on the 2001. That's the one that goes down to the dipstick. So that's this guy right here. And then that goes down to your dipstick. A couple other things. This is for my EGR valve here, which that also is gonna be deleted because that secondary air pump needs to go. The back side of the intake manifold here, for example, it came from that little port right there. The EGR we have our crankcase vent that used to go right there, but we took that out already So there's a few things that have to be deleted in here, but we're gonna do that one thing at a time one electrical connector back here so that guy needs to come out. So now this is what we're dealing with. We have everything here off that we need off except for the dipstick, but that I think can be done in place. So for a CCV delete, we need to take this guy off here and need to block off a couple ports in there. So these four bolts are a T20. So once all those bolts are out, you can just kind of wiggle this thing back and forth and it will come out. There's little O-rings inside those ports there. So just be careful you don't break the plastic, but that's it. Once you get that pried off, there's this guy right here. You can either take that off from this end or you can take it off from the top end but either way that has to come off so once you've taken that off you should have something looking like this these ports the one right there and the one right there those need to be blocked off this whole thing can be completely deleted this is no longer needed so you can take it off from underneath or you cut it or whatever you need to do but that doesn't need to be there anymore bottom portion here I'm gonna take that off and that I can save for some other time when I might need something else and t20 bolts there I'm gonna take that off and so this mechanism is off now normally honestly I would would just leave it in there but you can take it off you don't need to take it off but that one I decided to just in case I need it for another car something like that when you never know what you need and then all of a sudden it pops up that you need that thing well I got that thing now this comes one of the most important parts of this whole thing. This right here is attached to the 
dipstick. That we're gonna cut back just enough to stick a bolt in there and then we're gonna use a hose clamp and clamp that down. And we're gonna use the other end to actually block off this top portion right there. So I'm gonna cut that at a specific length or whatever it is for the bolt that I find. We're gonna jam that in there and hose clamp it. So there was a sleeve on that on the dipstick and I just was careful to cut that thing off because that's not needed anymore. It's just getting in the way. Now I found this bolt here. It seems like it's big enough. I might need something bigger, but either way, I'm gonna cut this CCV right here. I'm just gonna give her a cut so you can see the end of it right there. I'm gonna cut it to right about there. It's enough to stick a bolt in there. So the dipstick is here, the vent is there, so I've cut that back. So I'm just going to jam that bolt in there and then I'm going to use this hose clamp and I'm going to clamp it down and then that will forever stay that way. But I'm going to do that off camera because this is a tight spot. Just got this on here, so that's what that looks like now. That bolt is on there, it has the hose clamp on it, on the dipstick, so that portion is done. Alright, so I found two hoses here, this one was already cut, I'm going to use this for the bigger portion right there and we're going to stick a bolt in there as well and this portion on the smaller end. I'm just going to cut that to length and then block it off. So this is the setup that I have right now. I have this port blocked off here and this hose clamp needs to be facing just like that so that it can sit right in the runners of the intake manifold there. And then this side as well I have that blocked off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a lug nut in here and I'm going to jam that right in and throw a hose clamp over top of it. And this one I'm going to put this bolt in here and then crank that down with a hose clamp. And so right here is the finished product. I have one bolt clamped down in there and this ends super tight like that will never come off. I don't even think I can pull that off. And then this side has a lug nut stuck in there, hose clamped down and hose clamped on that end. So that works. It's only vacuum that's going through this thing. I mean, I mean, once you get boosting then then there is forced induction going through there, but this is this is good. That's never going to pop off. So at this point, this can be reinstalled on the intake manifold. I have decided to swap out the bolts that came out of it for these guys that I found in my shed they're also t30s but they're just a lot more clean they're from the interior of the car but I'm gonna use them on this all right so that there is the top half of your CCV delete finished you just have to block off those two ports there a lot of guys they like to run this in between where it came from or however that goes so that they don't have to block off both of them they only have to block off one underneath but I find that these are such weak points that I like to get rid of them and just deal with the plastic instead of these hoses because you can see how brittle this has become I know that's just the insulation but at the same time you know it's had its heat cycles over the years right so for me that's garbage and I like to block those off instead also the bottom side here you have the dipstick that's blocked off too so that's good to go so we're gonna take this right here and there's a little nipple that's on this thing I'm gonna take that off because this we're gonna use for the back of the intake manifold on the back of the manifold here there's two sections one is this diverter valve this is for the secondary pump because this port right here is what goes to the vacuum line on the EGR valve so I'm gonna take this little nipple I'm gonna block that off so that we don't have a vacuum leak there because I'm going to delete that secondary air pump because that's not needed in this application. And so really that's all there is to CCV delete. What you have to do now is go from that port and you either need to put it into a catch can or you need to vent that to atmosphere. Just note that if you vent that to atmosphere just like that, you're going to have a bunch of blow by that's going to make your underside of your hood super oily. So what you want to do is run that down to the ground ideally if you're going to do to atmosphere. So I'm just going to go and reinstall all this and put this intake manifold back on. I'm going to put this guy back through the bottom side of this. It's going to go up here as well. This is the alternator wire. One thing to make sure is to put that one connector on. That one right there, but that's the one on the back of the intake manifold. You need to put that one on before you put the intake manifold back on. And then now we'll get our hand in there and we'll get that 16 mil bolt back on for the manifold on that bracket on the bottom. So I'm getting that 16 mil bolt back on the bottom of the bracket there. And then and we're gonna secure the intake manifold on the top. So I put all the bolts down here on, I'm just gonna crank all these guys down here. There's an actual torque spec and torque order that you do these things in, but I just like to snug them down and then I go from the middle out. I'll do each one, tighten them down, start from the middle, do this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, that one, until you crank it down all the way. Manifold's done, all those bolts are tightened down, and now we're gonna throw the throttle body back on, get those connections 
connectors put back in all those sensors. Right now would be a good time to inspect your gadget, inspect those gaskets. This one's decent. I'm just going to lube it up a little bit so then it can make a nice seal and then that's it. So we're going to get this guy back in here now. So I got that throttle body back on. So now we're just going to put the sensor in the bottom here. That's for the, for the idle air. That sensor right there in the bottom now. And then we have this sensor here on the top. I'm not sure which one's for the idle air, but one of them is. And then the one's for position. Now we have this guy here. Pop that guy right up on the bracket right there. Slides onto that right there. And then we have our mass airflow sensor there. And we have our DESA valve sensor there. So this brake booster can go back in this little clamp right there. I need two hands for that so I can put that back in. So that guy's back in. Set that booster aside there. Going to need to put this engine harness back on those mounts there. First I'm going to get an air intake boot and I'm going to put that on. Alright so I think that this guy is pretty good. This one also, mm, this one looks like it's in better condition. I'll use that. So at the beginning of the video I mentioned that I don't like to have the hose clamps underneath of that. The reason being is because if you set them up you can put the bolt right there so it's really easy to get to. That's where I have it now. So now that that's on, you can slip on that engine harness there. Put that nut on and then there's a bolt right down here. There also is one underneath of the intake boot but I like to leave that one off because it's hard to get at. Now we have this intake boot here. That that needs to go on there with a clamp. I just found this piece in my shed there. This section here, the mass airflow sensor goes on the end of that. That's how that looks. So I just need to tighten down that clamp and then this one right here. We now need to put this brake booster back in. Stick that brake booster in. And now this portion here, this is from the fuel pressure regulator. This portion goes in the boot there and this portion goes on the brake booster. And then we'll put this side in the intake boot. There we go and that's for the fuel pressure regulator there. Now we flip this around here, hook in our mass airflow sensor. So I just threw a little bit of gasket maker on this diesel valve here. I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit, just let it dry. And then I'm going to do the fuel injectors in the meantime. So I got those fuel injectors back in. Just got to crank down this fuel rail here. Now we need to stick this electrical connector in here. These clips, you can set them up just like that and put them inside the fuel injectors and then clamp them down afterwards. So now I just put the air intake temperature sensor and then we have our, our position sensor here. Now I can put our alternator wire back on. Now we can slap this DESA valve back on too. All right, so that DESA valve's back in so that sensor can go back on. That is it, that's everything. I just plugged the end of this EGR valve here because that we're going to be deleting but basically I can just hook up a battery to this thing and I can try to crank this thing over oh first I have to put the ECU back in I got this thing hooked up right now but I'm gonna see if this will crank over and just start up with that new CCB delete <laughs> Right, guys so that's the end of the video as you see it can start up and, and everything's good with this car so the ccv lead is complete so that being said this is the end of the video if you like that video definitely hit that subscribe button because we got a lot more stuff coming up with this this car is the one that's getting boosted so if you like that video give it a thumbs up share it with a friend comment down below let me know what you thought of this and don't forget to join our discord we have a discord server it's a great community of people that are doing the same kind of stuff so we'll see you in the next video see you later